Hey you guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Akia and today I'm showing you how I make my most powerful elderberry syrup. So let's get started. So first I'm starting with about a cup of elderberries and these are dried elderberries. Elderberries are anti-inflammatory. They also boost your immunity. They also help with symptoms of cold and flu. So I'm just gonna do about a cup here. So I'm actually using my handy dandy stove here. So this is actually my first stove. When we moved in here, we didn't have a stove. So it's just like, you know, just give me a two stove burner and I can make it happen. So, but I actually wanted to use this stove so it brings me up more close and personal with you guys when I do my recipes instead of me running back and forth to the stove back here and having to change up my camera. So it also helps with that. It'll help me be more efficient in shooting my footage. So I guess we'll see how this works. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this into my pot. So I have it on high because what I want to do is get it boiling here and once it starts to boil I will turn it down and just let it simmer. All right now I'm going to add my echinacea. I don't know how to say that word. Echinacea, 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 echinacea. And echinacea is good for boosting the immune system. Also it's anti-inflammatory and it also helps with cold I'm going to add about one tablespoon of that into my pot here. Now I'll be adding my organic cinnamon sticks and you can use regular ground cinnamon as well. So I'm just going to use one of these because I haven't even been using these. I need to get rid of them. So I need to use them for something. So I'm just going to throw one in there. And oh, cinnamon is also very high in antioxidants and it's also anti-inflammatory. So now I'm going to add my ginger, one of my favorite roots. So I'm going to add about two tablespoons of ginger, maybe more. that to my pot here. And ginger, it relieves nausea, it also helps ease its cold and flu symptoms, and it also reduces inflammation. All right, so now I'm going to be adding my cloves. Um, cloves, they are an expectorant, so they help loosen phlegm, um, very high in antioxidants, kills bacteria, and also protects against cancer, so very good stuff right here. So I'm going to be adding about, let me look at my recipe here about one teaspoon. You don't want too much cloves because you add too much of this thing. It's very strong. Like the taste is very, very strong. So I'm just going to add about a teaspoon. And these are whole cloves. You can also use ground cloves. I'm going to add, and this is a one fourth teaspoon, so I'm just going to add two of these. to use either distilled, purified, or spring water because how good is your formula if you're using water from the sink or tap water. So make sure you use some clean water. So I'm using, this is spring water. All right, you guys. So that is all of the ingredients that I'm going to add right now. So I do have my honey and about the honey, you want to buy local honey because um, your body is used to the contaminants and the environment around you, so you want to use local honey, um, also raw and unfiltered honey. Like this honey here is from Bee City. It's called Bee City because, of course, they harvest bees, and so they make a lot of honey. Um, they don't touch their honey at all. It's very untouched, raw, unfiltered honey, um, and that's good because you want some of the bee pollen in your honey. That way that helps, especially people with... Um, 
pollen allergies and allergies and things like that that helps to boost the immune system so you don't want all of that strained out and pasteurized out of your honey um, also when you buy a lot of these commercial honeys they don't have all of the vitamins or enzymes and phytonutrients um, as the raw local honey so um, local honey is very um, antifungal antibacterial antiviral it reduces inflammation it's very cough suppressing um, and, and it also of course boosts your immunity so all right so it's simmering pretty good there I'm gonna go ahead and cover it I have already turned it down some so I'm just gonna let that simmer for about 30 minutes to an hour don't let it simmer and boil too much just turn your fire down as low as you can to where it's still simmering that way you will simmer all of your liquid out because you want to end up with one cup of liquid at the end. I'm going to take my arrowroot powder to thicken it. So I'm going to add about one fourth cup of arrowroot powder and then I'll just mix some of my spring water into that. But I don't want it too watery, so I'm going to mix just enough water to where it's not too watery. And also, I had this boiling for well over an hour, probably almost an hour and a half, because my mother came over. So I lost track of time. She bought us some lovely candy apples though. So we will enjoy this later. So, but I'm going to go ahead and add my water to this. Now I couldn't find any distilled water. I would rather distilled water, but I had to go with the spring water. I didn't want a big bottle of it, so I'm using little bottles that I bought. I'm just gonna add that to my arrow powder, give that a good mix. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and strain that, and I have to make it to about a cup. I hope I do, because it looks like I let too much oil out. Wait, I'll make it just barely. So what I did was strain my liquid, and I rinsed the pot out and added it back to the pot. That way, when I add the arrowroot powder, you want to add that over the heat. But make sure that you don't add but a little bit at a time. Give that a good stir. So that's the main thing. Just add a little bit at a time. I can't stress that enough. And make sure that you do it over heat. You don't want high heat, just keep the heat very low. All right, so once you finish adding your arrowroot powder, you wanna go ahead and let this cool. And the last step would be to add your honey. Um, for every one cup, you wanna add one half cup of honey. And also, if you want it to last a little bit longer, then it just sit in the refrigerator, preserving it, then you can add vodka, 40% by volume. Um, with a one to eight ratio. So like I say, for a cup, you just would add like one ounce of alcohol and that's it. All right, so I'm just gonna add the mixture back to my measuring cup here to make sure that I do have about a cup of liquid. Adding the arrowroot powder mixed with that water gives me a little bit over a cup here. So I have a washed container here. I'm just gonna go ahead and add it to this. And I'm going to let it cool, and then I'll add my honey. So it's not that, that thick, but it's thick enough, and you can always add more arrowroot powder mixed with the water. If you need it a little bit thicker. I think this consistency is good enough for me. So my mixture has cooled down to room temperature, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my honey. So I have my one half cup. I'm gonna do one half cup of honey. And I think this might loosen up my mixture just a little bit here, so I might have to add more arrowroot powder. So remember, kids under two, you don't wanna give them honey, you can give them glycerin. So anyway, you can play with this recipe. You can add more cloves if you like, add more ginger, add how much sweetener you would like. Um, this is just a basic recipe here. Um, it beats going to the store and paying 10 to $15 for a bottle of elderberry syrup that's only gonna last you for about a week especially if you take the recommended daily dosages. And also the sugars in the honey, and the honey itself acts as a natural preservative. So you can keep this in your refrigerator, you can store it for about several weeks, and of course, you know, if you add the alcohol, you can keep it a lot longer. Nice 
thick syrup. I'm going to go ahead and add this to my jar. For storing your elderberry syrup, you want to put it in a mason jar and label it. So I'll save this and put this in the freezer. And you can take about, I would say adults, take about one tablespoon per day. If you're sick and you do have a cold or a flu that you're coming down or getting sick, you can take this up to two or three times a day. Um, for kids, you want to do one half teaspoon. And if they're sick, maybe you can go up to um, a teaspoon a day, just taking it throughout the day. So just look at your recommended daily dosages for how to take elderberry if you're unsure. So there we have it. Elderberry syrup. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my top on. All right, you guys, so thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And don't change, just enhance your body. <laughs> All right, you guys, bye-bye.